So today we're gonna be solving the Dirichlet integral between negative infinity and infinity of sine of x divided by x with respect to x but using the Laplace transform. For the first time on this channel we're gonna be using the Laplace transform in order to solve well anything so it's gonna be huge I guess. Well, let's roll. So how are we supposed to do it? First of all, well, notice that sine of x over x is an even function. I mean, you know, sine of x is odd, x is odd, so the quotient has to be even. And we can thus rewrite this thing as just pretty much just double the integral between zero and infinity of the same sine of x over x dx. And actually, I would like to make this thing right here a function of some parameter t and then use the Laplace transform on it rather than this guy right there because well, this interval is not quite um, I say comfortable for me yeah so I would like to make myself a function i of some parameter t let's say it's gonna be the integral between zero and infinity of sine of t multiplied by x all divided by x going to be all with respect to x and now i would like to perform the laplace transform of this function so it's going to be the laplace transform of my function i of t is going to be well regularly normally the integral between zero and infinity of e to the power of negative some kind of an s times my t times my function i of t dt but that's the same thing as just the integral between zero and infinity of e to the negative s times t times the integral between zero and infinity of sine of t x divided by x dx and this entire thing with respect to t once again but now well we actually see that we are integrating this guy right here with respect to x. So t is just a constant with respect to the variable we're integrating there. So I can just slip this e to negative st inside of it. Well, what I'm going to get after doing that is actually a double integral between 0 and infinity in both case scenarios of just sine of t times x divided, oh no, divided by x times e to the negative s times t power with respect to x and then with respect to t. Well, I would honestly really love to be able to take this x right here out of this integral. I mean, I'm not really able to do it because I'm integrating with respect to x here, but if I could somehow just change the order of integration here, well, I would be set quite nicely. Well, because then, well, I would get... Like, nice and simplified version of this entire integral. So, well, can I do it? Can I perform the change of order of summation here? And I actually can do it, called Fubini's theorem. And so let's just, well, go on and perform it. We're gonna end up with the double integral, first of all, between zero and infinity, and then once again, zero and infinity, off. And then I'm gonna just bring this one over x out of the front, yeah? And then I'm gonna be left with sine of t multiplied by x, times e to the negative s t power dt dx. But now, what is this part right here, this integral with respect to t? This is just the Laplace transform of sine of t times x for some parameter x. But we know what it is. I mean, we know our... Laplace tables, I guess. So it's going to be x divided by x squared plus our s squared. Okay. Well, that's absolutely awesome because now we can just well, plug it in back in our integral, get in that is all equal to the integral between zero and infinity of one over x times the Laplace transform the sine of t times x. So x divided by x squared plus s squared that's gonna be all with respect to my x awesome but now i can just go on and cancel out those x's and be left with just the plain old integral between zero and infinity of one over x squared plus s squared dx but this is something we can just deal with using u sub i mean this is just going to be one over one over s multiplied by the arctangent 
of x divided by s in the bounds of 0 and infinity, when arctangent approaches infinity, I mean when x approaches infinity inside the arctangent, arctan is going to give us pi over 2, which is going to be 1 over s times pi over 2, and when arctan is given a 0, it spits out a 0, so this is going to be our answer. And so we see that the Laplace transform, that the Laplace transform of our original function i of t is going to be the same as just 1 over s times pi over 2. And so what we now need to do in order to well, retrieve our original integral, the Dirichlet integral, is we have to apply the inverse Laplace transform on it. So I would like to apply the inverse Laplace on both sides of this equality. Yeah, something like this. So on the left hand side, I'm just going to get, well, my i of t. But on the right hand side, what I'm going to get is just, well, the inverse of 1 over s is the same as just 1. And so what I'm going to get is just pi over 2. Just, you know, look up your Laplace tables. Yeah. So what I'm going to get then is that, well, i of t is pi over 2. That's awesome because I then get that the integral between 0 and infinity of sine of t multiplied by x all over x with respect to x, which was exactly my i of t, is equal to pi over 2. And so, pretty interestingly, it doesn't really matter what value of t we place here. It might be, you know, 2, 3, square root of 5, negative 1, whatever you wish. It's always going to give us pi over 2, interestingly enough. Yeah, but now we do really actually care about twice this value because we care about the integral between negative infinity and infinity of this sine of x all over x. And so we'll just have to multiply our integral right here by 2. So I'm going to get 2 times the integral from 0 to infinity of sine of x over x dx, but that's just 2 times pi over 2, which is pi. So that will be our final answer. I hope you guys enjoyed it and see you in the next one. Bye.